This is Radio Tatras International, your station of the stars. Hmm. One, two, three. Wash your hands, your hands. It just takes 20 seconds. Wash your hands, your hands. It's for your own protection. No exceptions, no objections. You'll make such a nice impression. No infection if you only wash your hands. Hi, it's Eric here at the base of the glorious Tattery Mountains, all covered in snow, as we are here as well. Uh, we will be touching on the tragedies around the world at the moment, but I do have a guest. Hello, Axel, who's in the house. Uh, hello to Paul. Paul, the producer's ready, able and willing. Uh, Michael's in the house, as is Emma Lou. Where's Emma Lou from? Australia. Oh, Hello. Oh, we should say um, Dubridin to Popratsky Spravi and to Russia. Yeah, we should. We should do, really. Um, hello to Darren, the original fire guy up there in Scotland. Uh, nice to have you with us. Uh, my <laughs> I'll let Michael tell you about the songs he's been loving today. Um, I think that Siri from the US of A. I don't know, my love. I might have got it wrong, but never mind. We know you're there, and we love you, and it's a lovely picture, and it's all wonderful. Um, as some of you will know, um, some more than others, I guess, we have been um, talking about the financial crisis a lot and what you can do in the financial crisis. And one of the things I would say, if you're listening right now live, please share this later with people that are struggling. Seriously. Uh, because on the line, we've got none other than Michael. Oh, my Lord, that's loud. <laughs> You're always loud. <laughs> <laughs> are you on a mi phone or a microphone? I'm on a microphone. It sounds horrible. Does it? It's over-modulating like crazy. Hold on, hold on. Turn it down a little bit. That, that would be a good start. Is there any better? It's much better, actually. You can go down a little bit more if you want to. Is that any better? Oh, that's more like you. Because I've got plenty of volume here to turn you up. That's easy. All right, OK. Um, and now you sound more like you rather than uh, talking through an oily rag. <laughs> which is a better thing. No, it's not Dave, Axel. It's Michael. Uh, and, and Michael's joining us because... And, and I get this. I mean, I, I went to the... Well, I actually managed to get out yesterday because Saturday, most of the roads here were impassable. Um, I've got this... Um, hiya, Mitchell. I, I got this lovely video sent to me from the guy that um, actually drives a snowplow. And he, he said, um, I think you'll like this, Eric. And he's actually going... In Slovak, he's saying this, go, 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 go. No, no, no. And he couldn't get the snowplow through the road to get to the next village. 
it was so bad, absolutely bad. Um, Axel reckons you sounded like Dave, Michael. (laughs) Actually, at the beginning, you kind of did. Yes, I I get that, Axel. That makes a lot of sense. Um, And I know there are issues over in Turkey, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, But first of all, Michael and... And I'm sure, well, it, it makes sense for me to tell you, so I'm not upsetting the man. Um, Michael's on a fixed income because he's on state benefit, uh, primarily because he can't work. It's not that he doesn't want to work, he can't work. And there's a big difference between the two. And so that puts Michael on, and I don't know the terminology, Michael will fit, fill us in with all that, Um it means he's on a fixed income. You can't earn it any money, can you, Michael? No, I can't. No, so nothing. Um, I'm basically on universal credit, mm-hmm. which is the state benefit. I am also uh, classed as limited capacity to work with the work uh, part of it mm-hmm. um, combined to it. That's because uh, you have several ailments, for goodness sake. Yes, um, I've got psoriasis of the skin, which is pretty bad at the moment, but I'm mm-hmm. getting that sorted hopefully on March the 2nd. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got arthritis in my right knee. I suffer from anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. And basically, um, last week I sent, I've appealed for a PIP because I got refused that, which is personal independence payments. Mm-hmm. And that was refused at the first time I've appealed it. And on Friday last week, I sent down a file with all my medical records, which was 258 meg Blimey. for the courts to go through. Good Lord. Good Lord. So you've had to do all the work for them? Yes. That's terrible. But the, the bottom line is we, we have to respect this. There, there has to be, and I've always said this, there has to be a safety net somewhere for people that are not in a position to go to work. We we, we had a, a lovely lady, I wouldn't say working, she was more uh, of an intern here for a while uh, because she wanted to learn English and she was blind. Now the government said, well, what's the point? But after she'd been here a bit and after she'd, sort of practised her English, they went, oh, heck, there is a future for her, so we'll help her. And that safety net needs to be there. Now, pardon me, the problem then comes in, how the hell do you balance the books? Because everybody's saying to me, we can't survive on the money that we're being given by the government. Now, is that true or false, Michael? Well, unless you're full of debt, then it's basically false because I'm on a fixed income. My universal credit is £334 a month. Mm. And I have to pay me bills. Okay, I get uh, housing benefit, which is £389, which is paid to me landlord, and I've got to top it up, which is £10 in the penny that I have to top it up with to make the £400 a month up. And also, I don't have to pay any council tax. Right. Um, But my bills, my water, my energy, my broadband, everything else I've got to pay for. And I've got to balance those books every month. And you've got got to feed yourself, you've got to clothe yourself. Yep. Do you get get help with medication? I... um, with being on universal credit, you get uh, free prescriptions. So you can you can actually aid recovery without having to worry too much. Yeah. Right. And when when you know with all the conditions you've got, you can't run around just eating anything you want to, because that's going to increase your weight. It's going to give you more problems. I mean, how do you create a balanced, healthy diet? Well, um, basically, I try and get out as much as possible that me, me knee allow me to. I've got, I've been given uh, exercises to do on the morning that I've 
to try and get my knee working on the morning to stop it from seizing up. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's good for the rest of the day, then I'll go for a, a little walk. Because where I live, there's um, a nature reserve, uh, which is five minutes away, which doesn't put any as much strain on my knee as possible. Mm-hmm. And basically just sit there for a few hours watching from the cliff tops, just watching the sea and the seagulls and stuff like that. Oh, that's got to be relaxing, isn't it? It helps when I'm feeling stressed out and I'm feeling my anxiety starting and my depression starting, then I will try and get out of the house as much as possible, even if it is just down to the um, nature reserve, to um, just to sit for five minutes, just to, you know, calm myself down. Mm. Now, I'm going to go back to budgeting, which is a slightly rude question, but you know, it, it, it does make sense. We we read, well, those, are, those that read newspapers, I don't personally, um, and you watch the news and you hear on the radio that everybody's struggling beyond belief. And I, I've been there. You know, I, I've been on unemployment benefit when I was about 40 and I fought my way out of it. And I know how tough it is when um, once a month I could have a meal which was beef rather than chicken because I couldn't afford beef the rest of the time. How do you, what, what do you live on and, and, and how are you managing your gas and electric and things like that in, in conjunction with food shopping? With me food shopping, I'll give myself a target of between 100 to 120 pound a month. That's my monthly shopping. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll get the cheapest beans, the cheapest spaghetti. Um, but are they, are they healthy, Michael? Um, the better, the better tasting than the uh, Heinz beans, actually. Um, oh, other brands are available. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I get, I just get the, um, well, I go to Asda, which is my local supermarket, and I can pick a tin of beans up for 25 pence. Can you really? And I get a few of them. Um, tins of spaghetti, 16 pence. You're joking. Uh, spaghetti loops, 19 pence, stuff like that. Uh, that's cheaper than here. Yep. <laughs> it's basically their budget range that I get. Everything I get from Asda is the budget range. Oh, okay. Uh, Mitchell says, sorry, Eric, I got distracted who your guest is. It's Michael. Okay, so what is a a typical food day for you then, Michael, from breakfast through? From breakfast, um, it's normally a bowl of porridge. Mm-hmm. For dinner, it's either... Um, I sometimes chop, chop and change between dinner and tea. Sometimes it could be um, some veg, some mashed potato, um, a piece of chicken, mm-hmm. which is done in the air fryer, not in the oven. Um, then then on a the night time, at tea time, I'll have either a, a cup of tea or a tuna sandwich. Mm-hmm. And then on a night time, uh, about supper time, it'll be... Um, a bottle of water and a couple of biscuits. All right. Uh, Axel's just said to you, Michael, boy, I thought I had it tough. Rough, sorry. Um, you would be surprised, Axel. You would. And the so you are eating square meals. Yes. But you're living on chicken rather than pork or beef, I guess. Oh, I have pork and beef. Really? Well. Yeah, I, I, wait, I do me shopping from Asda. The, the budget stuff is from Asda. Me frozen stuff's from Iceland. Mm-hmm. And they've got deals on from Iceland where you can get three items for £10. Right. So I spend about 50 to £60 of me £120 shopping at Iceland. And I get um, Hunter's chicken pe- uh, breast, mm-hmm. um, chicken legs, um, mince. Meatballs, all sorts. Blimey, I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless, Michael, and that isn't me at all. Um, it, it's, it, it's shocking. Well, Axel just said it sounds like you're in the in the county jail. 
uh, with what you're eating, but you're, you're surviving on it. I'm surviving on it. Um, as long as I can eat healthy and try and get out as much as possible to try and get my weight down, because I know I am obese, and even my doctors say I am, but I'm even, I'm even still trying to eat apples, oranges, bananas, as much fruit as possible, as much veg as possible. Mm -hmm. I can get a bag from Asda. I can get a bag of mixed veg, frozen mixed veg, for seventy-two pence, and that's a kilogram. Yeah. And that last, I get two bags of them, and that'll last me a month. Yeah, I, I, I think we've lost the art, dare I say it, of actually cooking our own food, and and it, it comes to an example because you know. English food and my wife go together like oil and water uh, because, as she says, you cook everything in one pan. Now, we, yep. we, we do tend to do that. So I did a Lancashire hot pot on Saturday in a big, big saucepan, piece of pork, vegetables, anything that was sort of like not very many of them, uh, lobbed them all in with some well-known gravy sauces and granules, yada, yada, yada put it on to slow cook for about three hours, I guess, even with potatoes in, they don't fall the bits because it's on a very low heat. And yet we got Saturday, Sunday, and we've got enough left for me to have four more meals from it. Uh, and that includes lunch today and tomorrow. Now, when you look at the cost of doing that, um, it's actually quite minuscule if you're prepared to go and peel some vegetables well i have a slow cooker as well and basically what i do is i put me curries in there me bolognese me um sweet and sour because if i if i get chicken chicken um breasts i do them with sweet and sour sauce mm -hmm. then all i've got to that i put that on first thing on the morning I put it on high, so it's cooked for four hours. Mm -hmm. Then I'll um, do the rice, and that's my day, meal for to, for the deer as well as the next deer. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Um, Axel wants to know, does Mike live... He's calling you Mike. Um, does Mike live in the city or the country? I live in the town. Yeah, so you're halfway between. Yeah. And Mitchell wants to know, is this the Michael off of you now? Yes, it is. The same one. And, and Michael very uh, courteously volunteered to have this conversation because um, we touched on the topic of budgeting with a low income um, and, you know, feeding yourself, heating yourself. And, and the big conversation at the time was heating and lighting. And uh, Michael graciously said, look, I'll come and explain how it's done, if you like. Um, and so thank you, Michael, for that. But... We now move on to heating, lighting, and water because they're expensive commodities whichever way round. Mm -hmm. And yet, you're not freezing cold, are you? No. How do you do it? Um, basically, we've gotten the government's £400 um, that we don't have to pay back. Mm -hmm. So, basically, that gets put on me... I've got um, my gas and electric at prepayment meters, so that automatically goes on there. Um, what I try and do is, as much as possible, is try and keep me heating off during the day. Try and use, because where I live, I, it's like a bit of a sun trap, so I, whatever sun I get, I get through me, me dining room window. Mm -hmm. So that heats the room up, so I stay in that room. Um, about four o'clock, I'll put me heating on, and... Um, That'll stay on for about an hour, and that's it for the deer. And does that keep you warm? Yes, yeah. It, keep, it keeps me lovely and warm. I try and keep it up as um, between 18 to 20 degrees, which yeah. I've read that, that most um, doctors and um, these people, you know, top people have said that um, that's the temperature that it should be. 
uh, minimum temperature, I should say, that it should be. Right. So I try and keep it to that minimum temperature as much as possible. Um, with us not using my oven anymore, I'm saving money on my electric. Um, lighting, I've got, I've changed from ordinary bulbs to LED lights. Right. Um, I've got one light in my living room, which I put on. Where I sit, where my computers, there is no lighting on. I'm using candles all the time. Really? Cheaper, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I'm using candles because um, they're much cheaper. You know, I can get a bag of candles for about 35 pence. You really so work this out, haven't you? Yep. Oh, yeah. I've just looked at things, me bills I've looked at, um, me mobile phone, um, that was costing us £40. Got in touch with the company and says, right, because um, my airtime was up in December last year. And I basically turned around and told them, right, if you want us to keep as a, as a customer, this is what I want. I want a new phone. You lower me airtime. And basically, you, they've lowered it from £41 to £30, including the price of the phone. Blimey. Hmm. A- Axel's asking about using candles uh, and says that's not good for your eyes. Um, I'm using tea leaves, uh, tea, tea lights, so they're all okay, here um, for what I want them for. Okay. Um, it's just basically I'm sitting in front of a monitor anywhere, so and the way I've got the candles situated, it's lighting the room up, so that's fine by me. So it's really to see the keyboard and that rather than actually look at something. Yes. In in the yep. in the true sense of the word. So it's not like reading a book where you would be straining your eyes. No, I'm not reading a book or anything like that. It's just basically looking at the monitor, looking at the keyboard, or looking at my phone. And the, the way I've got them situated around the house, uh, around the dining room, they light the room up, no problem. All right. And, of course, they get rid of all nasty odours and things like that as well, don't they? Yes, they do. They burn everything off, which is which yep. is really helpful. We often hear that um, the people are putting on the electric at the beginning of the month, and by the end of the month, they've run out. Is that true? Well, I get paid... On the 16th of every month, that's when my dear for me universal credit, universal credit drops into me bank account. And I just put £50 on me gas at the moment because mm. I've got enough let rig. Um, because what I do is during the year, in, when it's the warm weather, I don't put any gas on. Uh, money on me gas, I just put it on me electric to keep the electric topped up, so when it comes to the winter, and I know I've got to start using me gas, that's when I switch and stop putting uh, me money on me gas instead of me electric. Um, I've done it that way for years, but with this um, £67, by, it was started off as £66 a month that we were getting from the government, and that was going on to your electric, then it's gone up to £67. And with us not um, basically using all this electric, mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I can trans with me energy company, I can transfer, uh, transfer some of that money over to me gas. So at the moment, I'll just have a look on me meters. Yeah. I have £206.74 on me ga- um, electric and Two hundred and six pound and sixty one pence on me gas. And how long would that last? According to me meters, one hundred and nineteen days for me electric and one hundred and twenty four days for me gas. That's like three months. Yep. Yeah, but hang on a minute. The whole of the media is saying people are running out of energy, and yet you're saying you've got three months worth of energy on your meters. And you're on the same fixed income. What's going wrong? I haven't a clue. Unless it's just scaremongering by the media. Could be. Could be. Uh, Axel's got a good idea. Sleep at night, play during the day. (laughs) And it's kind of what you're doing, isn't it? 
after well, I'll get her up at eight, nine, ten o'clock in the morning, and then I will go to bed at eleven, twelve o'clock. Mm-hmm. So I'll get me me full eight, eight hours, nine hours sleep, mm-hmm. and then I'll prep. Uh, if I've got to do something, we're just doing me rock shows. I'll prep a show. I will do something. Um, look for music, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that'll um, take most of me day up. Okay. Um, if I need to go for a walk, I'll go for a walk. I'll just do something that will occupy my mind all the time so I'm not um, worrying about anything. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see your point. Mitchell's got a great question for you. Uh, when the government help stops... How will you cope with the energy bills, Michael? I will just do what I normally do. And that'll be when the in March, when it all stops, I will be uh, just topping me electric up as normal. And then I will come November, oh my, October, November, I will switch to me gas and uh, keep as much money back as possible for... Uh, to put it on the electric, and um, I would think I would have to go up to about seventy pound a month for the electric, mm-hmm. just to keep us topped up all the time. So, um, but what Mitchell's but, saying is, when the government help stops, how will you cope? Um, when the government help stops, that's something I've got to come to, and I know that. It's going to be a big problem, but I'm going to have to try and cope as much as possible, like everybody else has to, because mm-hmm. everybody else is in the same boat. Where come March, after the March, the last payment of the sixty-seven pound will stop, and everybody else is in that same boat as well. And it's going to have to be where I might have to cover that sixty-seven pound by. Instead of just putting fifty pound on, I'll top up another six, seventeen pound and keep the sixty-seven pound going. But what will you give up to make that happen? Um, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't suppose you do, to be honest. No, but it's... one one thing I have given up, and I've given up this up for years, is the TV license. Right. Um, because it is, I don't watch BBC. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's nothing to watch on the BBC at the moment. <laughs> um, I knew that was coming. I knew <laughs> it. <laughs> but um, I've stopped using, I've stopped watching live programmes um, because what's the point? You've got all the streaming apps, so I might as well just use them. Right. That helps a little um, bit, but there again, yeah. you have got the cost, which, you, as you said, you brought the cost down of having yep. the internet on. Does that does that internet cover you for a whole month? Yes, it does. Oh, well, that, that's never so bad. Never so bad at all. So yep. do, you, do you think or are you expecting the government to do something at the end of this cold spell um to help people like yourself there is talk of um what i've heard from the government and what i've read if it is true or not i don't know but those are that are on low income are supposed to get 900 pound from the government if it's true or not i don't know and i'm not holding out for it no but um if that, all right just say 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 that did happen would that then cover you it would. It would help us out quite a lot. It would help everybody out quite a lot. Um, but you, you said at the beginning that this works if it is you're not in debt. Yes. What did you mean by that? Well, I don't have uh, credit cards. I don't have any higher purchase mm-hmm. because I know that if I do get any of them, it will absolutely crush me. Mm-hmm. 
So right. if I want something, I've got to save up for it. And if that means putting five, ten pound a month away and then waiting until I've got the full money to get it, then so be it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean I I I so agree with you because one <clears> of the things in Slovakia is that credit cards are not profound. I mean you can get them if you really want them. But the psyche here Unless it's buying a house or a car, which you would go to a bank for, you would save up for something, you know, a television or a home appliance or, or, or a computer or something like that. And, and you would save up. And I got rid of all my credit cards. They were all paid off. And now I only have a bank card. And yeah. with that, because it's so connected to your telephone these days, you it kind of says, hello, you idiot, you've just spent this money. And after a while, you go, hmm, that's going to come up on my phone and tell me I'm an idiot. So you don't do it. And that, That's exactly the way my bank account's set up as well. How do you mean? Where if I spend anything, if I've got any money in my bank account and I spend anything, it'll flash up on my phone telling us you spent this. Mm -hmm. So then I know what I've spent. Mm. And sometimes it could be on a simple thing like a bar of chocolate and it'll flash up and tell me I've bought a bar of chocolate. <laughs> and then you feel guilty. Yes. Oof. It's horrible. Uh, Michael, don't go away. We can have a quick break. Uh, just to remind everybody about the unbelievable COVID um, numbers in the UK and to keep washing your hands. But stay on the line, Michael. We'll finish in a second. Uh, this is Radio Tatras International, uh, courtesy of Michael. We're actually looking at the way you can survive even in these rotten days. Wash your hands, your hands. It just takes 20 seconds. Wash your hands, your hands. It's for your own protection. No exceptions, no objections. You'll make such a nice impression. No infection if you only wash your hands. And you're done. Mr. Attitude. Eric Wiltshire. Radio Tatras International. And that means I don't have to say any of it. Because I am Eric Wiltshire and this is Radio Tatras International. Which reminds me, before we carry on talking to Michael, um, I have to say thank you to Stuart, who reminded me that in 2009, he got the news about RTI closing down. Uh, that was courtesy of the Slovak government. Um, and complimented me for getting it back and keeping it going. Uh, you're very welcome, Stuart. Because, you know, good things should not go away. They should keep going. And th there's nothing on this planet that will stop me keeping this going as long as I can. Um, right, Michael, back to you. The, a lot of things that we take for granted, and you've actually covered some of them already, which is the internet, mobile phone, and things like that. Um do you consider those to be necessities or luxuries? Um, at one point, they were a luxury, but now they're a, a necessity now. Because? Because most of your stuff is done on the internet now. Um, even me, when I go on to me um, universal credit, when I get notices on my phone saying, oh, you've got a message and all that rubbish mm -hmm. and I go on I've got to go on their website I can't ring them up anymore and see what's the message about oh I mean ring, I've got to go ring, online no ringing up at UK government departments like banging your head against a brick wall oh yeah well I've done that a few times as well with them <laughs> yeah. no, I get that mate I get it <laughs> get it totally but what what do you consider I mean you've already said if you want something you save up for it so I'm presuming that is luxuries that you're saving up for. I mean, yes. what do you have around your house without um, inciting burglaries um, that you consider to be luxuries? A luxury to me is me desktop computer. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, did you buy? Did me... you buy that new or second hand or what? It was um, an ex business machine, right? And it cost me one hundred and twenty pound. It's a second generation i five computer, which is fine. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the the crazy thing is, is that presumably you do quite a lot with them, and and people don't realise that computers don't have to be water cooled and all those sort of crazy things. Um, and if you set up an office machine properly, it will do a lot for you, won't it? Well, exactly. It's got. Um... But this did have on board sound till the sound went off, and I've had to save up and buy uh, a sound card for it. But um, yeah, it's if set up properly, it's it's great to use. I can put Windows 11 on this mm -hmm. um, with a bit tinkering, because um, um, if I try and do it normally, it won't work. We're being so old, but if you tinker with it a, a bit, it will work. Mm -hmm. So I've got Windows 11 on this. I can play my music through this. I can watch films through it. Um, I've got... You can read the uh, news I've, on it. I've even got an old uh, mixing desk through it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's it, really. Yeah, it, it's quite funny, actually, you say that. Because, um, as I said earlier, we couldn't go out shopping on Saturday because you couldn't get out. It, mm -hmm. it, it was just... I think I might have risked it on my own, but I wouldn't have risked it with Martina in the car. Now, we when we went out shopping yesterday, I have this magnet inside me, which is a shocking magnet, um, because in the middle of one of our local stores, they have these two rows of the special offers. I know Lidl have theirs on sort of a couple of rows and... Uh, we have another store called Kaufland, which is um, a German company again. Uh, not quite as pretty as Lidl, but it's okay. And I wandered down there yesterday, and I said to this bloke, um, who I always talk to because he, he kind of practices his English with me, and I said, is that the real price? And he went, yeah. Why? Is it is it too expensive? I said, well, no, but are you sure? And he said, yeah, why, what's the problem? And I said, well, this is a studio microphone with one of those attachments that sticks it in, you know, with the, um, uh, like, la well, not plastic bands, they're metal things. So it's not actually screwed to anything. It's sitting in fresh air. Um, an, an XLR cable, a um, hinge stand... So a bit like those old-fashioned um, table lamps with the spring hinges on it. Um, the clamp for the desk, yada, 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 yada. And it was all in one box for 29 euros. And I said, could you find out what's wrong? You know, why are they so cheap? He went and spoke to a mate, comes back, he says, I have the answer, Eric. So I said, go on then. And apparently, and I'd, uh, it didn't bother me, um, whatsoever, uh, people ha these boxes were originally over a hundred pound, a hundred euros, and because they're not a USB cable, they didn't sell. So they've dropped and dropped and dropped the price down to thirty euros. Still can't ruddy sell them, and I thought, well, I'm taking one anyway because they've only got uh, three point five mil or, or um, you know the eighth inch plug on the end of the microphone cable. Not realising you can get an adapter for that anyway, and not realising that a studio call. I mean, I, I checked it with Vieka this morning because I wanted a new microphone for the guests' place here, and I got one with the uh, with the clamp and the bracketry and and all the sprung bits of metal that you get, um, and it it's it's I have to say better sounding than this one. For twenty nine euros, and I, and I think you're saying the same thing. It doesn't always have to be a gold plated product to actually achieve what you want to achieve. Am I right? Yeah, but the microphone I'm using, um, 
it's a Bessinger C3, and it um, I had to save up for it because I was wanting it, and um, it cost me forty three pound. Yeah, uh, Mitchell's got an interesting point, which I don't really kind of understand, but I'll read it. Um, they want Michael to Mitchell says they want Michael to contact the benefits people online. How did they think he bought his computer on benefit? Huh? Oh, I'm, oh, yeah, I kind of get it. If they come to your house, Michael, and see that you bought a computer, they might want to know how you got one. Well, I show them. Because it, it was bought online. And if I save up, and I, if I put money away and save up, and it's there, mm -hmm. then it's there. Yeah. But what, you see, this is, this is the problem. And I think this goes alongside your uh, comment of earlier about debt and things like that because there are TV programs where you see people going and buying expensive television and expensive computers on, on uh, finance rather than um, actually having something and making it work. Now, you can do that because you're a bit of a techie in the first place. Yes. Um, oh, Osama. Hello, Osama. Nice to have you with us because you've just joined for the first time. Thank you. Um, so w what you're actually saying is as long as it's fit for purpose or you can jigger it about a bit, you can afford to buy things even though it might take you six months to save up the money. Yes. Yep. And there you go then. You see, Mitchell, that's the answer. Yeah. It's, it's there. And plus, if the <clears throat> benefits want to check me bank account, which they legally can now, mm -hmm. they will find that there's no money going in, so I'm not working. Mm. Mm. So, so you can, well, if they, if they ask you the stupid questions, they'd be shooting themselves in the foot, really. Yeah. Yeah. So it can be done, but it's down to not taking something things out on credit and doing the old-fashioned thing of the 50s, 60s, 70s and saving up before you buy something. Yes, that's that's basically what I'm doing. Amazing, mate. I, I, I'll tell you what, we have got to do some news in a minute, so I'll, I'll have to let you go. But the, the fact that you have... I mean, there is no fiddle on this, boys and girls... Michael is on universal credit. Um, he's getting the same government support as other people, and yet he's managing to survive. I wouldn't say it's the greatest existence in the world, and I, and I wouldn't say it's luxurious by any stretch of the imagination, um, because you're... Well, go on, Michael, you go. To be quite honest, everything that I've got in the house is second-hand. Even even the TV that I watch uh, me me fire stick on, it's mm -hmm. second hand. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, it works. Yeah, that's it. Me TV's the eleven year old. It's a flat screen TV, and it's the eleven eleven year old, which I bought from a charity shop. Right. Um, that I saved up for, and it cost us forty pound. Wow. The printer that I've got, the Canon printer that I've got, that's second hand. It cost us a fiver. All the all all that was missing was the um the driver disc. Which of course you can download. Yep. Uh, Mitchell's just set, just sent you a lovely message, Michael. He says, Thanks, Michael, for your insight. It is it it, it is very humbling to hear you. Um but by the same token, it's also shocking to hear that the media are indirectly saying, you're not telling the truth. It can't be done. It's not the way it works. Well, the, the media is scaremongering, and it's all doom, 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 when it's a case of, as Dad's army used to say, don't panic. Yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Axel, Axel says, Mitchell, Michael, you need to get a roommate to help you pay your bills. 
Uh, but then he'd only lose money anyway, Axel. So it's six of one and two threes, to be honest. Because uh, mm. if you have shared bills, they take that off the payments you're getting anyway. So you, you don't kind of win that way around. But I, I, I've just got to say a million thanks, Michael, because it, it shows if you really, really want something and if you really want to make it work, it is possible. Oh, it is. It's possible. Um, you just got to know. Just got to have the the gumption to not spend it on a credit card, not spend it on how you purchase, and just save up. Mm. And it's funny how people junk things to charity shops, and those charity shops can be an absolute gold mine for certain people. Well, I, I'll tell you something. The T-shirt that I'm wearing at the moment, mm -hmm. it is a, I think it's an Adidas, mm -hmm. or Kelvin Klein, something like that. Oh, my that Lord. I've got on. Um, it's a Kelvin Klein T-shirt. Um, it's a 3XL, as because we've been obese and fat and, you know, <laughs> That's right. Stomach type thing. <laughs> that makes two of us. Don't worry about it. Um, it cost me at the charity shop one pound fifty. Good lord. Jeez. Yeah, Axel's got a solution for you. Go online and find a rich woman. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Axel. That is cool. I don't, I, Oh, no, uh, what, one was it? One was enough when I was married. That's it. I'm enjoying the single life. Yeah, I can't say. It. Yeah, I get. I get your point totally. It's hard to find Martinas in this world. Um, but no, I, I admire the fact that you've done it, and further, I admire the fact that you're prepared to come on the radio and talk about it, because neither are easy, and to actually fez up and say. Hello, I'm the bloke down the road from you, uh, and I'm the one without the money, and yet I can make it all work. Um, Mitchell says, send Michael an RTI polo top for his input to that. I'd like if if he could fit into one of them, I would, Mitchell. I don't think I've got <laughs> one the right size because they don't fit me either. I'll, I'll send him a baseball cap instead, because um, at least that'll fit him. Keep his head warm, you see. That'd work. Oh well, um, come come the second of March, I'll have no hair because with me psoriasis, uh, me psoriasis of the skin getting everywhere, and I mean everywhere. Uh huh. I'm having to shave me hair off, <gasps> so I'm going bald. Right. Well, in so, which case, uh, you send your address right. to to Vierka at studio at rti fm. And as a thank you, we'll send you a couple of baseball caps so you can wash them, keep them clean, be nice and good for your skin, um, and you can still keep yourself warm. That works. Right. Thank you, Eric. You're very welcome. Michael, thank you so much. Um, it's been an honour to speak to you on the radio, and um, you keep doing it, mate, and we will share this everywhere we can. Right. Everywhere we can. And maybe... It will just help one or two other people, and that would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. Uh, Michael, we're going to have to love and leave you. See you soon. Take care of yourself. We're going to wash our hands again, and then we'll look at some of the news headlines. Cheers, Michael. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wonderful guy. One, two, three. Wait, wash your hands, your hands. It just takes 20 seconds. Wash your hands, your hands. It's for your own protection. No exceptions. Radio Tatras International. Uh, Axel says, have a good day, Michael. Um, and honestly, I'm humbled that Michael came on. I, I, I just take so much guts to do that. Um, it's just amazing. And I know there's lots of things going on in the world that we need to talk about today, and we will just quickly mention them in the few minutes we've got left. But if one person takes that message and does something about it, then 
Michael more so than RTI, but Michael and RTI have managed to help one person. Seriously, boys and girls, that's good enough for me. It really is. Um, Reuters are now reporting 1,400 people uh, dead in Turkey to these t- horrific earthquakes. And, you know, when they happen, people go, why? And what people, I mean, Axel knows this from California. It's the same over there. The earth is made up of these tectonic plates who, that move. Uh, in fact, we're on the edge of one here, and we do have little earthquakes every now and again, which is how we got the mountains there in the first place. So, I mean, it, it is tragic. And the pictures on the television say more than I can ever, uh, ever aim to, to say. Um, and, and our thoughts and prayers are just with the families out there because um, you know, we can't even... If, if you haven't been in that situation, how do you know what it's like? Yes, I agree with you, Mitchell. Uh, Michael did and took a lot of guts to do what he's just done. So, again, thank you, Michael. Um, and, you know, with, with all this stuff going on in the world, we've still got Ukraine being a terrible problem. And uh, uh, Michael's just said the BBC website pictures are not looking good from Turkey. No, I've, I saw them myself. Um, Mr Putin has vowed not to kill Zelensky. Yeah, right, and we believe that. You have got no chance. No chance. I'll give you some good news now, which made, well, anyway, yesterday it made me happy. Um, in some ways, uh, the all-time record goal scorer for Tottenham Hotspur is now Harry Kane. He used to be Jimmy Greaves, who was a wonderful soccer player uh, for the Americans, a great football player for others, other countries. Um, and yet he's so unassuming. So unassuming. And, of course, Spurs beat Manchester City 1-0. How's about that? Uh, Mitchell's moved sides again. He's gone to the dark side. <laughs> uh, I can see. Um, and, you know, it, it, going back to Ukraine for a second, more and more children are suffering who have fled the Ukraine. And that, and that is absolutely horrific. Absolutely Horrific. Um, There's now fears of fires after the Grenville tragedy. um, And people are holding back, uh, switching to building with wood. If you said that in America, lots of people would laugh at you. Because it's a standard sort of construction building. It really is. It's an absolute normal building thing. Yep, it is very sad what's happening in Turkey. I couldn't agree with you more, mate. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, uh, China are really upset about the spy balloon spotted over America. Oh, dear. You let it go, lads. And if you let it go, these things are going to happen. It's one of those things. Um, Michael's read that some of the firemen who went to put the Grenfell fire out are now suffering from cancer. Really? Whew. I mean, one, one of the things in, uh, certainly in Turkey, when you talk of construction, I mean, the houses there are not built in the same fashion as a lot of the properties here, even here where a lot of people still live in what are called panel flats or panel like. Um, and these were buildings made with solid concrete, um, put together by the Russians when they controlled everything. Um, only to, well, They thought they'd last 50 years. Um, <laughs> some official documentation came out a few years ago showing that the structures had all been checked and they were good for a 1,000 years. Well, thank you, Moscow. That's a nice thing to have. Um, And, you know, these things just do happen. Yeah, I was right. I was just checking. 1,400 dead now in Turkey. 
as the second earthquake hits. Um, and it, it, it is just terrible. There's no other words for it. No other words for it for, at all. Let's give you some light news to finish on. Um, before we started the show, someone, some of you will have heard uh, that uh, we played Rick Ashley. It's his birthday today. Lovely bloke, actually. He's, he's just a fun guy. He really is a fun guy. And it's also Natalie Cole's birthday. Great, another great singer. And, of course, Axel Rose. It's his birthday alongside Bob Marley. Gosh. And here's a good one. It's time to talk day. I can do that. Um, <laughs> and one of the ones I really love, um, uh, Michael's loving the music we're playing on RTI. It, it, it is new. We, we have rejigged it, as they say. Um, it's not an oldie station. It's not a new station. It's an everything station. Um, but the, the music is what I would call wow factor music, if that's a format, I don't know. Um, and uh, what Michael's just done on the 6th of February, it's pay a compliment day. And Michael's just done that. Wow. Um, one of the other good ones is reclaim social day. And it's to do with social media and not giving up on it. In other, in other words, share positive things, cheerful stories, rather than all the, the negative stuff that you see where everybody's you know, moaning about the end of the world and everything. Um, and yet the um, truth is there are positive stories out there. I mean, you know, talking to Stuart this morning, 2009, he lost what he wanted to listen to. Uh, 2023, we're back. And we're here. Simple as that. Um, oh, there's one for Michael. Get your pan ready, Michael. It's Oatmeal Monday. I like oatmeal. Don't know why. Oh, here's one for all the negative people. It's <laughs> National Sicky Day. Yeah. Hmm. And it's also National Frozen Yogurt Day. It's, it's funny. There's a lot of ice cream here which is that old-fashioned, yogurty tasting ice cream. And I honestly think it's the best on the planet. I really do. I, I, I just love the stuff. Uh, what? America's got to go to war with whom? Doesn't need to go to war with anybody. Um, their American ozone, $50 trillion dollars uh, they want their money back. Are they going to take the country? Oh no! I, 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 I think that the 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 bigger um, global institutions, which I include America and China and Russia in, are often going to play games. It's wrong. It's totally wrong that they even do it, but they do do it, and I think they just do it to if you like, hide some news that they want to hide at a certain day. And, and it, was a, it was a ritual in, in the old days of print where you'd have a really bad story come out on a day, like today with Turkey. And then all these companies that wanted to hide the figures that they haven't done quite as well as they did the year before, all their press releases would come out on that day Um so that they got buried in the news. So nobody ever knew about it. Um, hi to Yasmin, by the way. Where's Yasmin? In Germany. That's nice. We like Germany. In fact, we like the Deutsche Welle, where I used to be associated for a while. And hello to Nick Martin, who's still there. Uh, wonderful bloke. Re really fantastic guy. Um, so I, I think the trouble is, Axel, that so many people jump on bandwagons in this day and age of internet and, and fast action reporting, which, to be fair, the news agencies have really got their heads around now, um, whereas I can remember the days where 
the BBC wouldn't take a feed from somewhere um, because it wasn't up to quality. How screw that? Um, if, if the content's right, you take it. Uh, have a good day, RTI, says Axel, who's off. Uh, he'll be jumping in his car and going to work shortly over there in, in America. And, and I will just check the uh, numbers for you um, at the moment in Turkey. And it's now standing at, an, well, they are suggesting 1,500 people have died. Uh, thousands are injured as uh, Turkey is now hit by a second wave as well. Hmm. Um, wow. Israel to send troops to officially and publicly help Syria for the first time. Good Lord. Whew. That's really nice. I can't get my head around that. That is fantastic. Uh, the pictures from uh, Turkey are absolutely horrible. I wouldn't let your kids see them at all. Um, it, it's shocking. And Reuters have actually got video of a building collapsing. And that's often due to the structural uh, levels of um, the, the construction of those buildings uh, itself. China's actually going to volunteer to send humanitarian emergency aid to Turkey and Syria because of all the problems with the um, horrible states there. Oh, my Lord. It is just tragic with those earthquakes. It is tragic. Yep, 1,500 people dead. Not 15,000, as you're saying, Paul. 1,500. Uh, I've got to go. Uh, see you all on Wednesday. Have a super day. Don't be too negative about it because um, it... There's a lot of good things around, even when there's lots of bad. And you're quite right, Mitchell. Israel is absolutely fantastic at sending specialist crews to just about anywhere in the world um, if there are problems. Uh, we'll see you all again soon. Have a great day and keep smiling. One, two, three. Wash your hands, your hands.